Martin Luther once said, the Bible is the cradle where Christ is laid. In cracking open this ancient book, we encounter the living Word of God, both in the Old Testament and in the New. We discover through the human words printed on the page the eternal Word of God in this. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, revealing more to us than this world would have us to see. We don't worship the Bible, or at least we shouldn't. It's safe to say that the Bible is not our God. That would be idolatry. And we don't worship those words. What we worship is God. In reading the Bible, though, we do experience Christ. Through our interactions and immersion in the Holy Spirit, we can have the experience of Christ entering into our hearts and into our lives. Those lifeless symbols printed on the page can indeed open to us a doorway into the living Word of God. But now don't doubt for a second mind or the Lutheran Church's respect for this holy book, for the Bible. It's the focus of everything that we do. From the words of liturgy spoken here in worship, to the focus on sermons and Bible studies, the Bible is the place that we go to find God's wisdom for the context of our modern lives. Wisdom so profound that 2,000 years ago or more, we still turn to it more than anything else. No, do not doubt for a second just how important this book is for us. I'm just pointing out that it is not our God. And for this reason, we don't worship the Bible. We worship the living Word, the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And even though we may encounter God through Holy Scriptures, a book could never fully contain God. Our Gospel lesson today shares with us the good news that because of Jesus Christ's ministry on earth and His ascension back to the Father, we get to encounter God in a new way. We get to encounter the living God, a God who didn't stop talking when the final draft of the Bible was published about 400 years after Jesus died and resurrected. And God has more to say than any book can contain. Jesus shares with us that the Word of God cannot and will not be limited to only what has been said in the past, but that God will continue to self-reveal to us the kingdom of God as it unfolds in our reality, in our lives, this very day. Jesus gives to his people his everlasting presence in the form of the Holy Spirit, putting his Spirit in his people, transforming our lives and our relationship with God. We are promised today of the Advocate who will come and continue to reveal God's Word to us, even after Jesus has ascended. Yes, Jesus has spoken much, and much of it has been recorded in Holy Scriptures, but as we hear from Jesus' own lips, the Word is not going to be limited to this medium. The Word is much bigger than we might imagine. And the Word will continue to be revealed through the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us today, I still have many things to tell you. And He has every intention of sharing with us these things, even if He is going to return to heaven. To do this, to share with us His teaching, He gives the Church His Spirit. Because God is not done speaking the good news into our lives in new ways. Jesus shares with us the spirit of truth that he told us that the world cannot receive, but yet that he entrusts to the church, to the body of Christ on earth. We, the church, continue to receive the spirit of truth through which the word will always be active and continually reveal. Now this is a huge responsibility. 
It is through the holy community that God will continue to speak to God's people. Do you remember those, what would you do, what would Jesus do bracelets that people used to wear? WWJD stood for, what would Jesus do? It's a question that rose from the social gospel movement around the turn of the 19th century, and it's a good question. One way to answer it is to open up the Bible to see what Jesus actually did, and then to copy it, to follow his example as disciples. And this really works well when it comes to how to treat a leper who asks for help, or how you should pray for others when you find yourself hanging on a cross, or how you might present yourself to family and friends after you resurrect. And while these might be pressing questions on your mind, I seriously doubt that. You are probably more interested in asking what would Jesus do in a modern context. You might wonder, what would Jesus do if somebody cut him off on the road? What would Jesus do if somebody asked him for money and he only had a credit card in his purse? What would Jesus do if he was worried about a friend who was on drugs? Now sure, you can take those stories about Jesus and apply them to modern circumstances, but the problem that will arise is that we really don't know much about Jesus' life. We actually only get about three years of his ministry in the Bible. We don't know what Jesus would do about a lot of things in the modern world. Jesus may have lived a full human life, but we don't have access into the Bible about what Jesus would do or say about a lot of things. I mean, he tells us to turn our cheek, and we can sometimes do that. But what about turning our children's cheeks? And Jesus never says anything about that. There are just too many times that the Bible brings up more questions than answers. It takes a living word to share the answers that we are really looking for in our lives today. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. We need her to help us. We need her to guide us and to share with us the word of God beyond the first century context. We need this advocate who shares with us the living word of God that can help us through our lives. We need the real word of God that shares with us the right way to react to what the world presents to us in this century. We need the real Word of God that is there to share with us the will of God for us. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we try desperately sometimes to do the right thing. But there are many times that we are very unsure about what to do. There are times when people in the church don't agree and struggle to come up with how we are going to react to a challenging situation. There are times when two people read a passage in Holy Scripture and interpret it in very different ways. The problem with this world is that it's broken. But we learn today that beyond this brokenness, we as the church are shared in the spirit of truth who will guide us through the shadows and into the light. And we learn here that it is in this communion with each other and with God that we will continue to be revealed new things about God and God's will. That God's word actually does keep up with the times because of the Holy Spirit's work. Jesus Christ shares with the church, that's us together, what he will not share with the world. And this is important to remember. Individually, we are not shared the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gospel tells us that this gift comes only to the body of Christ. Together, the important word here is together. Together, we are shared the responsibility of discerning God's will, trusting that the acting, living word is among
amongst us because Jesus promises us that it will be. And that only together, only together as the church does the Holy Spirit conquer the sinfulness inside us as individuals. You've heard before that the sum is greater than the individual parts. That's true for the Word of God. And that's true for this community as well. It is the church that gets what the world cannot be trusted with. Together and only together we experience, we encounter God in a way that we never could alone. God is alive in us. And because of Jesus' gift, the Spirit still rests in the body of Christ on earth. Amen.